Entrepreneurship right now is about providing solutions to the problems that actually affect the society. I think the entrepreneurial journey is exciting uh, and I would love for more people to join um, because it's all about solving problems. As young people, we can actually create solutions because as, as, as Africans or as Ugandans, we're blessed with many challenges that we can turn them into opportunities um, and, and have a good life in future. The people who will actually make the change in our country, uh, in our continent, are the people who right now are, are living those problems. They're the people who are experiencing the pain of taking, uh, taking public transportation. Or it's the people who have to go to hospitals and wait for long hours to be served. There's many problems they are to solve. Right? So if you pick one, Right, and solve that problem. I mean, you'll be making a difference and adding value to the community at large. Let's start from the problems we're already experiencing and then see, see if there's a solution for it. If there's no solution for it, start with the small resources you have. If you want to change the world, right, you might as well start from home. We, the users of the, of the road, and also adverse with the with the with the with the rules and regula regulations of traffic, and so we find ourselves each and every individual is abusing the road, be it the ministers, be it the police, be it, I mean everyone. It's like we're not so sure what we're supposed to be doing. Traffic in Kampala it is too too much, too much and too bad. Sometimes, as we who are doing Uber we fail to do what we have to do because the job is too, too, too much. I use public transport. So many um, people use public transport. When you look at the continent, um, it's the most used means of transport. Um, not even just our continent, but the whole world. Um, and these are challenges that you will see across the different cities. So there's so many delays, and there's change of fare when it rains. Um, you know, you know, and everyone knows that the conductor and the driver are stealing a big portion of the revenue. Public transport is perceived as a means of transport for those who cannot afford vehicles, motorcycles and the likes, yet it's actually the most environmental friendly and shared means of transport. So we are in here to use innovation to make the experience of public transport uh, the most efficient and have it as the most uh, chosen uh, means of transport because it saves on congestion, it's much more affordable, and it's actually clean. Our company is a, a company that's providing innovations in the smart transport sector. And we have three major products. We have Tap and Go, which is an electronic payment system for public transport. We have Tap and Go Wi-Fi, which is 4G internet on board the bus that enhances the experience of someone who's using the bus. And then we have Tap and Go Green, which is uh, retrofitting buses from using um, petrol and diesel to using LPG gas. Uh, makes them cleaner and more environmentally friendly. We then aim to get to electric buses at some point in the future. You, you let me know when she should go, right? Sour, sour, sour. Sure. <laughs> Hi, my name is Kipto Magut. Uh, I'm a co-founder and CTO at uh, Twende Carpool. My name is Winnie Biwot and I am one of the founders of Twende. My name is Rama Madiba, the CEO and co-founder of Twende, Kapu, uh, where we do peer-to-peer uh, -peer ride sharing, others known as Kapu. I was on pressure. <laughs> BOA. I B-O-A. My name is Ricky Rapa Thompson, co-founder and director of Safe Border. <laughs> We are, we are <laughs> That's why it's not actually. And we're what? trying to make time. <laughs> 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 no? Hi, my name is Ife Oluwa Ogundipe. Hi, I am Damaga Albini. Hi, my name is Bokun We, we are, are the, the founders of Our Bike, bike and, and we're, we're making cycling, cycling cool today. again.
Hi guys, welcome to the Our Bike HQ. Come on in. Our Bike is a micro mobility company that is focused on providing sustainable transportation options for Africa's 1.2 billion people. We have also completed over 270,000 trips in less than 10 months. We pride ourselves in taking care of the environment and with our products we, uh, we intend to reduce everybody's carbon f footprint as much as possible. So what we do in three folds and why we're different is the fact that we, we, we're a transportation option, A, B, we help people exercise while they transport, and then C, we also provide a healthier and cleaner environment. This is our app. Like you can see, the bicycle. But it's also AWA hour, right? Yeah, so that's you basically tap. If you tap into that, it will show you the number of bikes in the area you have in the area. This is the QR code here, right? And there's one here at the back of it. Yeah, so you basically unlock the bike. What we try to do and how we change things is A, we provide that flexibility, you know, for, for the commuter to be in control of where and when and how, you know, he or she decides to move from point A to point B. At the beginning, one of the biggest problems we faced was convincing um, at first the investors that this was going to be viable because I mean how would you tell somebody that you want to put bicycles in school but lucky for us our investors were very very um, forward-minded people and we explained to them and let them see how this can work. We want people to understand that it's for us, it's for everyone on our own, which is what we get people saying from time to time, say our bike, now we get them on our own. The most important person you have to convince is yourself. Once you can convince yourself that your idea is good enough, then be, make sure you are very tenacious and try to convince as many people as you can convince. The dream is to get as many people as possible in Africa on bicycles. The importance of green transportation, um, as we know, the world, the technological level with respect to countries are changing. Even in Ghana, Ghana is growing fast in the technology ecosystem. And what that means is that very soon people will be looking at using solar energy to uh, power our cars. You get it? Because in Africa, we have a lot of sun power. Right? So as it stands now, there are companies here in Ghana who are looking at I mean, transforming or disrupting why, I mean, the, the way we use fuel to power our cars. They are looking at using solar and all of that. And I think that is going to transform a lot of things in Ghana. For, for example, Accra, right? We have a lot of traffic jams, right? And most of the cars are like very old, so you can I mean, the thought that will come to mind is that they are polluting the air and that goes on to, I mean, give us a lot of problems, right? So I think one thing that we have to be looking at is um, using solar power or bringing um, electric cars and that will be something, a, a game changer in the, in, the, in the industry. Nigeria has a lot of vehicles and those vehicles um, release some very toxic emissions to the, to the ozone layer um, would agree today that Nigeria is much hotter than it used to be 15, 20 years ago. Um, and and these, these are just results of, of global warming, right? Um, we, we really need to begin to take active steps to try to cut that down. 
one of the biggest contributors of that are combustion engines, which are present in motor vehicles and a lot of other transportation options. The fact that we can get people on bicycles, you know, manually moving around with bicycles as opposed to um, other modes of combustion engines also means that we're doing a part in cutting down, you know, these emissions. The idea is hopefully that a lot of other industries would follow and also try to find sustainable ways of doing things. What carpooling is, it's really peer-to-peer -peer ride sharing. Uh, ride sharing broadly, you know, there's peer-to-peer, -peer, there's cab hailing, which the likes of Uber and Lyft for the most part are. Um, and that's mostly on-demand ride sharing. Uh, that's what uh, Uber and whatnot does. Carpooling, on the other hand, is is peer-to-peer. -peer. It requires a bit of planning uh, because you you have to find somebody who's going the same direction as yourself. Uh, and usually, the primary motive motivation for carpooling is to save on costs, is to share space that already exists. We feel that when they, of course in Kiswahili it means let's go, right? Um, it not only captures what the, the idea is about, enabling people to move together, um, it's, it captures the spirit of togetherness uh, or, or uh, the shared experience of, of moving from one place to another. In some particular spots around the country or around the city, you find that some, some, some people in the state would, you, you know, would flag you down, tell you where, where, where are you going, then do you have space for two or, some, or, or just something like that. And then you realize that uh, this is the same shared economy. What comes to your mind as a driver? The first thing is, is this person going to where I'm going? Is he going further? Is he going, is he going in, in, in between where I'm traveling? Do I know this person? Is it safe uh, to carry this person? Those are some of the questions that quickly, then you make a decision that, ah, it's not worth it. No, that is what we want to solve. Twenty right now we're focused on long distance uh, ride sharing, right, or carpooling. So between the cities, typically a trip that lasts 30 minutes or more. You're not going to get a taxi usually to go from, let's say, Nairobi to Nakuru. It's quite expensive. You're going to pay maybe at least 5,000 shillings um, or 50 dollars. If you share a car, uh, you probably just end up paying maybe 500 shillings or a thousand at most. It's convenient because it will. It, it is coming for you at your area of convenience. You know there are some areas which uh, cannot access these uh, shuttles. If if this cab can come for us at our place, it's good for us. Kipto, one of one of the other co-founder. Co was my classmate in high school. And when we met uh, maybe 12 years later, and we felt that uh, there is a problem that was at hand and that we needed to solve. Uh, I was stranded in Europe, in Brussels, trying to go to Paris. And you know, the flights were overbooked, the trains were very expensive, um, and I couldn't find the buses. And one of my friends who was traveling with me um, remembered that there was this other app he had remembered, or he had heard of before. And so we looked it up on our website, we went to Blah Blah Car, and uh, lo and behold, we found some guy who was driving from Brussels to Paris the next day. And uh, we got connected, we were on his car, and you know, so while on that trip, it dawned on me that this is something that should be available in Kenya. But of course it wasn't. And uh, I don't know whether it is a sign of the universe or just sheer coincidence, but Rama was calling me two weeks later and saying, I've been thinking about this problem. So many, many times I would drive from Nairobi to Eldoret, which is my home, and I, I would want to couple with someone. It would be lonely. And when Kipto had just come in from, uh, from, from Europe at the time, I, I mentioned to him that uh, we, we, we need to have a service whereby people can post trips and we can, we can all have a right uh, share uh, economy. So that, that, that's how uh, that was born. It 
it works by planning and somebody posting a trip and another person uh, looking and booking for that trip. Once the driver uh, sets the pricing, we show that to the passengers, they book. We take a 15% commission um, from each booking. And so that's how Twente is able to sustain itself. And that's what we're building towards uh, a more sustainable future. We have two engineers on the team. Uh, I am an economist myself. We knew some of the reasons people will not want to couple. We understood it usually about trust. So we knew from the beginning the models we were going to use were things that will inspire trust. So the first thing we did was partner with an influencer uh, who, who pushed the, the idea out and the product. So once we did that, it generated a, a, some buzz and then now the word of mouth started. Um, from there, we were able to build a network. There's a social part of trust and then there's a tech part of it. In the social aspect, we try to connect you with people who you're more likely to um, feel comfortable with. So what, what we've tried to do is build a graph right, of, of social connections uh, so that we pair people who are more likely to get along together. Um, on the tech part, um, first of all, we have a rigorous um, onboarding process where people submit their verified identities. Everyone will have a profile picture that will show you know, their face. We want you to have reviews and ratings because they give the person the ability to, to preview the other person's history on trend. I work with a fantastic team of people. People who, you know, we, even when we are down, there's always be one of us who will, who will hold the hand of, of the other. Yeah, so I have, I've, I've come to know that as Rama, I don't have uh, everything that it takes to build Twende. But it had to take Kipto to come in. It had to take Willy to come in. And it had to take our other colleagues to come in. So that together then we can be able to, to complement and fit where, each, where the others are lacking. They always say it takes a village, right, um, to do this kind of thing. And I've never felt that it'd be so true than in the last two years because, uh, you know, without the support of people around me, uh, my friends, uh, my community, and, you know, my colleagues here, it would, it would not have been possible. My name is Ricky Rapper Thompson, co-founder and director of Safe Border. Some people will tell you I was inspired by Wu and Wu. Me, I, as a local person, as someone who did not have the best education, I thought I was just providing a solution to the problem that existed. And boom, it became a business. I, I have grown to become an entrepreneur. So most people, most times people refer to me as a natural born entrepreneur, someone who just from nowhere became the guy today. So became the entrepreneur that inspires many young people that many young people look up to. So Safe Border Idea was born as a result of tragedy. Uh, for me as a person, um, during the time that I was riding a border border, I lost a very, very good friend in a border border related accident and felt that at that moment something needed to be done for the border border industry to be able to save the industry itself. And, um, and that's how I met with, um, with Max and Alistair, with whom we co-founded what is now known as Safe Border. They were coming from like the customer world and every time they, they visited Kampala, they also felt like this is not the best for the industry because they felt very, very unsafe. And uh, of course the border border industry was very, very dangerous for anybody. It was hard for you to trust a border driver that you use every single day. It was, it was risky for you to use a border because the border drivers do not have second helmets for you and most of the drivers do not know exactly what they were doing on the road. So both of us felt like there's something that needed to be done. And we teamed up together and we, are, we were able to build what is now known as safe border. It was very, very difficult for us to change the mindset of our drivers. And maybe something that, that any other entrepreneur will still go through is like regulation, you know. Most of these things that we are doing, as they were never captured because some of the regulation that we are dealing with were even, some of them were made before even we were, we were born. But along the way, 
we're able to do what we, are, we have done. We have done the right thing. The community and the society has accepted that. The government has accepted that. Every other person has accepted us. People feel now that safe border is the future of urban transportation, not only in Kampala, but across Africa. Today, Safe Border app is like the most used local app um, locally because there is no app that was built from here that is being tapped every single day like Safe Border. And preferably in the next five years, Safe Border will become a super app that everyone has it, that everyone uses it every single day. And that's what we look forward to doing. Because right now, if you look at the Safe Border app, you're able to take a ride, right? You're able to send um, uh, passions. If you want to send anything, you can use the Safe Border app. If you want to buy airtime, you can use Safe Border app. You can also share even the credit. So you'll be able to pay um, utilities and, and do other things with the Safe Border app. Like that is from the, from the customer side. Then from the driver side, you can be able to borrow loan, buy fuel, buy food, do shopping using the Safe Border app. So we're looking at everything. Um, we're looking at the lives of our drivers and maybe what our customers do and build special products for them. And that is the future. To be a director of a company that employs over 200 young people, you should be okay. By default, you're okay. Like, your life is okay. Your family, your, your brothers can do school, and every other person can have a good time, especially people who are close to you. But also as a person, I've created an opportunity for myself. Um, I'm now fully employed by Safe Border. I'm, I'm happy, my family is happy, people look up to me, I'm okay. So I'm very proud that I have become who I am today because of Safe Border. My life has, it's been, uh, so what I can say is my life has greatly changed um, and uh, physically, financially, I think I, I am very okay, yes. Uh, God has blessed me, I am okay. <laughs> For anyone out there who is thinking of going into entrepreneurship, uh, don't think it's going to be easy. It's going to be a challenge. It's something that will push you, that will uh, enable you to grow a lot of skills you didn't have. You look around, there's many problems there to solve. Right? So if you pick one right, and solve that problem, I mean, you'll be making a difference and adding value to the community at large. So, I mean, to entrepreneurs, solve a problem. Let's stop complaining, solve a problem and add value and I mean, sky's the limit. I would say knowing what, uh, what you're trying to solve at the end of the day will, will take you so, so far. I would say you have to be prepared for it though, mentally. It's, you know, it's a hard journey, it's long, it's not a, a one-time event, it's, it's a process. And so, um, you know, I would start with identifying a problem that you really uh, uh, resonate with. Uh, and that you think can scale, can be solved for large numbers of people. Um, that way you can actually uh, build something that will last, uh, that will become sustainable in the long run. I always tell young people that for you to be able to raise money or for you to be able to reach that level where people need to invest in you, um, you need to first invest in your own idea. So I had a job, I was doing my tours while riding, while riding border border and also my other co-founders were also working. So it was first, first investment was us as a team. And then we went to the network of our friends. They helped us, we did crowdfunding. And then we applied for grants. We were able to get some grants. It was our first initial investment and in a network of our friends that prepared us to be able to raise, to raise funds. And now we are this big organization. I tell the fellow youth, so many of us sit out there without jobs. It's true, uh, the jobs are not there. But if we can put ourselves in the hot seat, we can create the jobs. If, to give an example, if we have a million youth who are looking for jobs, if, uh, ten, if a thousand of them in, in chose to go the entrepreneurship way, innovatively, then the thousand people can be able to employ the, the rest 900,000. It's possible, it's been done elsewhere. And I think uh, we have all what it takes. We just need a shift of mindset and to understand that at the end of the day, it's, it's the growth that we so need that once we have it, nothing can stand between us and the solutions that we provide within our localities.